Let's say you've got about £85,000 to spend on a new car. First of all, look at you. And you're looking for something sporting and German. Should you go for a fully loaded BMW M3 competition or an entry level Porsche 911 Carrera with no options on it? Well, in this video, we're going to find out because I'm going to talk you around the exterior, the interior of these cars, their practicality, you're going to take them for a drive, see how much fun they are, do a brake test with them, and of course, I'm going to launch them. And I'm going to try not to kill some birds of prey in the process. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you are most definitely watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Right then, people, let's talk cash money. So, Bindaloo M3 competition starts from £75,000. This one here, with all the options on it, £87,000. But fret ye not, because look, you can save an average of £6,500 off an M3 competition through CarWow. As for the Porsche, well, the 911 Carrera starts from £83,000. So this one, with a few options, is £85,000. Unfortunately, you can't actually buy a 911 outright through CarWow, so there's no savings through us, but you can lease one through CarWow, so there it is. Now, you're probably watching this video going, I don't care anyway, Matt, I'm just watching these videos for fun. Well, how very dare you? Actually, you might be thinking of selling a car, and you can now sell a car through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos of your car, put in the details, and you'll get offers back from our trusted dealers and you can just pick one and they'll come and take your car away and give you the cash simple now to find out more about car reviews deals and also selling your car through car wow just simply click on the pop-out banner up there to go to our website alternatively at a later date you can just simply google help me car wow and my team and i will help you choose your right car or sell your car and um what else can we do yeah that's pretty much it really now let's talk about these cars designs in particular their grills so i'm going to do an impression of both the cars see if you can guess which is which okay you ready Next one is, yeah, you guessed it. That was the BMW. The first one was the 911. And they've got nicknames. Well, they have with me anyway. This one, Beaver Teeth. <coughs> this one, I call it Zippy because it looks like a character from a children's TV show in the UK. This is what it looks like. Certainly not my fault. Now, the Porsche likes to keep things generally simple apart from that massive lower grill. Whereas the BMW, it's got all the add-ons going on. Look, you've got sculptured bonnet, you've got vents, wings, and all kinds of stuff. And this one has the upgraded carbon pack, so you get some carbonage here as well. I think the Porsche is the better looking from the front though. Now let's compare the rear of the cars. So the BMW M3 gets this fixed little bootlet spoiler. This one, it's made out of carbon. You get a prominent rear diffuser. This is part of the carbon pack. And four exhausts of quite a decent size. And they're real, look, I can even fist them. Look at that, I can just about fist them. Looks mean. Then the Porsche. It's simpler, but it has some nice details. Love the full length light bar. I like this as well. Check out the vents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this bit, 11. You get it? Then there's a spoiler which remains hidden until you go over a certain speed or you press a button in the cabin and then it pops up electrically. Finally, we come on to the exhaust because we need to talk about them. They look big, but they are just fake surrounds. Oh yeah, inside the real exhaust. Hmm, not so sure about that. Last thing to talk about is how wide the 911 is. In the past, you could get a narrow-bodied 911 and a wide-body one. Now they are all wide. From the side, these cars are so very different. This is basically a three series, practical four-door body with some extra bits added on, some of which are questionable, like this bit here, and other bits which are classic, like the fistable door mirrors, this is this car quite a bit already, haven't I? Let's stop it. That hurt. This just lower slung two door coupe with that classic 911 shape. It's beautiful. In terms of wheel sizes, 20s at the back, 90s at the front. Exactly the same for this BMW. Oh, this is this is just gorgeous. I like this. Now let's get into a little bit more about what these cars like to drive. Starting with their brakes. So the BMW obviously has uprated brakes over the standard 3 Series. You've got six piston calipers that are gripping 380mm discs here at the front. At the back you've got 370mm discs gripped by a single piston caliper. If you want to do lots of track days you might want to upgrade to the carbon ceramics, though they are rather expensive. You get them as part of an £8,000 option pack. Meanwhile, the Porsche has 330mm discs gripped by four piston calipers at the front and the back. If you want carbon ceramics on this Porsche, you actually have to upgrade the wheel size as well. So you've got 20s at the front and 21s at the back. And in total, doing that and adding the carbon brakes will cost you around eight grand, as well as the BMW. Anyway, now let's compare the cars 
actual braking performance. Okay, now I'm gonna do a brake test from 60 miles an hour, see what distance this car will stop in. Here we go. Okay, let's see, what was the distance? No way, 30 meters, that is so very good. Wow. All right, now I'm gonna brake test the BMW. Same thing, full emergency stop from 60 miles an hour. Here we go. It stopped in 33 meters. Not bad, just not as good as the Porsche. Now let's compare what they sound like when you rev them while stationary. So come on, let's hear the Porsche. Hmm, seems to have a soft limiter. Now let's hear the BMW. Oh yeah, no soft limiters here. Thank you very much, BMW. Now let's compare what these cars are like to sit in for you, the driver. I mean, this is very clearly a sports car. You sit low, the steering wheel is in the perfect position. The dash is high and it harks back to the original 911s, the air-cooled ones. So do the dials and they even have an analog rev counter in the center, whereas the other screens are all digital. Though the steering wheel rim does actually block the outer two screens, which isn't ideal. Build quality feels solid, materials luxurious, though it's not actually quite as good as you might think, as you'll find out when we get to the launch section, when I time these cars from 0 to 60. So look out for that. Love the seats though, really nice. I like the patterning on them. It's a Porsche 911, you feel like you're in something special. Though there is one thing that really does do my head in about it, it's the infotainment system. It is a little bit fiddly to use when you're driving because the icons are small, but the biggest problem for me with it is the fact it doesn't have Android Auto, just Apple CarPlay, and I've got a Samsung phone. I'm an Android guy. What's going on? Thankfully, the BMW's infotainment system does now have Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay, and it's all wirelessly connected. And I think the infotainment system in this BMW is better, though I do prefer the dials in the Porsche because the BMW's digital dial is a little bit dark and dingy, but they do give you a lot of information. Still, this car is fully loaded. You even get a heads-up display as standard, and it's really clear and useful. The inside of this cabin feels very well made. You've got leather everywhere. It's lovely, and there's lots of carbon. You get carbon here, and you get carbon on the steering wheel, and carbon paddle shifters for the gearbox as well. These seats are part of a £6,000 carbon pack, which includes the exterior styling bits. I love them, they're carbon backed. Now you do get a carbon roof as standard on this car, that's not part of the carbon pack. Anyway, back to these seats. Lovely once you're in them, though there are two things that are annoying about them. One is they can be a bit of a pain to get into in the first place because of these high sides. And two, this divider in the middle, this hard carbon divider just kind of gets in the way, it's unnecessary. Other than that, it doesn't feel quite as sporty, obviously, as the Porsche, though you can get these seats super low, really low in the car, which is good if you're driving on track, but not so good if you're driving around town, because then you can't see much at all. So you have to jack it up like that, like some old granny. I'm a granny in my M3. Be nice and close to the steering wheel. There's lots of bits and pieces in here which are upgraded over a normal three series, such as the M gear lever where you can actually select the ferocity of the gear shifts. You also get these M mode buttons here where you can pre-configure the car exactly as you want it, press these and go into the exact mode you want, including even pre-configuring one of them to have the stability control off if you want to get all leery very, very quickly. Yes, this is a bit of an awkward position. I'm going to go back down here. Don't care if I can't see. Don't care. Finally, the bit you've all been waiting for, we are going to compare the engines. So this is BMW's S58 engine. It's one for the BMW fanboys. It is a three litre twin turbo straight six with 510 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque. It's mated to an eight speed automatic gearbox with a torque converter, not a dual clutcher like the old M3. Hmm. Drives the rear wheels in this particular car, though you can get a four wheel drive version. However, this rear drive version is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, but we'll see about that in a moment when I launch it. There at the Porsche, there's not much of an engine to look at. You have to get it on a ramp to see it. Anyway, it's slung out over the rear axle, classic 911. Just like the BMW, it's a three litre, six cylinder, twin turbo, though it's a flat six, not a straight six. In terms of the output, 385 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. And it's driving the rear wheels in this particular car, although you can get a four wheel drive version, via an eight speed automatic gearbox, but with dual clutches. Less power, but a dual clutch auto. Will that help the launch? Let's find out. This 911 Carrera is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds, but let's see. 
Draw the throttle, so easy in a 911. Oh. A little bit for traction, but off we go. God, it's quick. <sighs> a classic Porsche. 960, 3.89 seconds, and this is the entry level car. That is nuts. I'm going to do it again. So, so simple. No faffing around. Lift on the brake for the throttle. Come on, let me just set this up. Here we go. All sliding then. I hit the voice command while doing it. Not so quick that time. I had a bit of slippage. What did you say? Shut up. I said shut up. Reject. I reject Offline you. Offline voice control. Your entry, please. No, go away. Just a moment, please. Why are you still talking at me? Please select an entry. Cancel. Voice control cancelled. Voice command button's just there. Seems to have a rattle. Can you hear that? It's this bit of trim. Put my elbow on it, it stops. It's annoying. Okay, one last launch then. Oh, it's a good hook. Oh my god. 3.76 to 60. That is just bonkers. Apparently, if you get this car with a sport chrono package, which has a little dial there on the steering wheel with a sports plus mode, which is beyond sport, it accelerates a little bit quicker still. Not sure how it does that, it just does. Now I'm gonna launch the BMW. Annoyingly, you have to have the stability control off, which is worrying. Let's do it anyway. Come on. Actually hooked up pretty well. 4.20, not as quick as the Porsche. Right, I'm gonna try again. Now amazingly, this thing actually launches in second gear. <laughs> No, it wasn't as quick either. 4.32. It's almost like it is managing the slip, even though it says stability's off. I have had a sub four second out of an M3 before. Maybe this surface just yeah, isn't grippy enough. And of course, the engine at the front, power going to the back, it doesn't have the weight over the rear axle like the Porsche does. So it doesn't get as good traction from the get-go. Last chance, BMW, what are you gonna do? It's a bit better. 4.04, quicker, but still not as quick as the 911. This BMW might not have launched quite as well as the Porsche, but it's a family car and you can easily launch it with a bunch of adults in the back. Look at this, there's loads of room, loads of knee room, headroom's good, and I've got rear doors to make it easy for me to get into or for me to get a baby seat into the back of. And there's room for one of those rear facing seats, which are really bulky, which could be useful to me soon. We'll find out why later on in the video. The Porsche is not so good in the back. In fact, I'm pretty sure that being in this position is against my human rights. Hmm. Still, it's a sports car, isn't it? And it's sort of got back seats that you can use for torturing people. The Porsche isn't particularly great for carrying stuff either because the capacity of this front boot is just 132 litres. Look, I can't quite fit in there. Whereas with the BMW, there is 480 litres of boot space. So I can fit in here, I think. That's all good. Special levers, which allow you to fold down the seats. See? Use your family car, this. Even though it's got all that performance. All right? Come on. Out of my way. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about these car chassis. So obviously the M3 based on a 3 Series, but it's got chassis bracing underneath the bonnet. You have lowered stiffened sport suspension with adaptive dampers. You also have different rear suspension subframes and they're directly bolted onto the chassis itself. And then at the rear, a limited slip differential. Moving on to the Porsche. It's a bespoke sports car, isn't it? So this is how it comes pretty much. You do get adaptive dampers as standard on this, and then that's pretty much it. There's no limited slip differential as standard. I guess the reasoning for that is that you've got so much weight over the rear axle, you don't really need it. Though, of course, if you want to, you can get it fitted as an option. Now, in case you're wondering what these marks are here, took this thing on a track day. That's all from like tire pickup splattering down the side of the car. Don't worry though, this car has PPF in its vulnerable bits, as does the BMW. Anyhow, let's see what it's like to drive on the road. So what's this 911 like to drive? Well, as a daily, it's pretty chilled. You'd be surprised how easy it is to live with. Visibility is great. The gearbox is smooth-ish when you're just in normal mode. You know what, over bumps as well, the car is firm, but it's not uncomfortable. So that's fine. The steering has a bit of 
heft to it, but it's not overly heavy. I mean, I really do like it. In fact, there is one thing though that does drive me nuts about the 911, and it's when you're on a long distance journey. You get so much tire noise. It's really, really bad. I think it's because you're so close to the rear tires and they're so blooming fat. It just drives you crazy. If they could just fix the sound insulation on this car, make it just have less tire noise, it would be so easy to live with every day. And I reckon it would help more people justify having one. Anyway, that's a lot of nonsense. The real reason why you want one of these is the weight drive. So I'm just gonna go into sports mode, go into manual mode for the gearbox, and take control. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. Not only is the rattle in the door, there's a couple of other little rattles, which you probably wouldn't expect on a Porsche. You'll soon forget about that when you start to wind it up. This thing is an absolute weapon. Real joy to drive, you feel so connected. Being a 911 with the engine at the back, and not that much weight over the nose, you are always fighting understeer when you're really going for it. So you've just got to manage. Blimey, almost hit a bird of prey. God, I had to break then, didn't want to kill that. Anyway, let's get back to it. You are managing understeer. So you don't want to get on the pad too soon because it'll just push wide, but you can get on the pad quite early because with the weight over the back, it just hunkers down and then puts all that power down cleanly through those huge rear wheels. A lot of people think that the rear drive setup means that it's unbalanced this car, but it's not. Porsche has been doing the 911 since the 60s, so it's sorted out any of the problems that you might have had with the back end just coming round on you. They've just got it very neutral now. And the stability control is brilliant in the way that it just stops things getting out of shape. This is a real pleasure to drive this car. You just have to drive it in the 911 way. It's part of the fun. It's so very good, this. I love it, I love 911s. That's why I own one. I just like to own this one as well. However, there is one way that this new 911 is not as good as my old 911, and that is the sound. One, it's turbocharged, which does mute the exhaust note a bit, and two, modern regulations, petrol particulate filters. They just don't sound as good as they used to. But still, flat sixes for the win. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the video, but are you a German? Yeah, ich bin einer Berliner. If like Simon you are, then click on the pop-out banner up there to check out the new CarWow Germany channel. It's presented by a proper, genuine German person. Here's some clips of him speaking German. Guck mal, was schön der Toyota Jahrescross fahren kann. Warum weiß ich das? Weil ich ihn gefahren bin. Ihr guckt, ihr guckt ihn und ich bin CarWow. <laughs> so go on, go up there, click on and make sure that you subscribe. All right, go away, go away, go away. It's fine. Let's see what this BMW is like to daily drive then. Once again, I've got it in its comfiest setting. First thing I noticed then was the brakes. They are a bit grabby. Touch them a bit, nothing happens, touch them a bit more, bang. Should be awesome on the track day though. Now, when you're just cruising around, it's quite mellow, this car. I can put the exhaust into quiet mode and you don't hear too much. Compared to a normal 3 Series, it is firmer, the suspension. You just feel more bumps in the road. In fact, you feel a bit more than in the Porsche. So this feels a bit more fidgety than the Porsche, but the Porsche feels firmer. So when you go over a bigger bump, the Porsche goes more clunk, whereas this doesn't. This is a bit softer when you've got the dampers in their softest setting. But the little imperfections in the road, this seems to pick them up worse. One thing that is definitely better in this compared to the Porsche is the tire noise. I mean, it's still not very quiet. And when you get on longer journeys, it can be a bit annoying in this as well, but it's just not as bad as the 911. Steering is light when you're just maneuvering around. So that's a good thing when you're daily driving. But I can put the car into like sporty mode, dead quick, because I've pre-configured all the settings as I like. Just press this button on the steering wheel once and I'm good to go. I'm gonna go manual as well. There we are, let's go. Now, the 0-60 on this car might not be quite as impressive as the Porsches, but this engine has more pulling power, it does. It's a nutty engine. Seems a bit more raucous as well. The car feels more pointed, more lively. Because it hasn't got the weight over the back axle, it's more likely to step out. And because you've got the weight over the nose, it's slightly less understeery. The steering feels a little bit sharper than the Porsches, though I actually prefer the feel of the steering in the Porsche. The Porsche is more of a car that you flow with down the road. This is just more of an animal. It is definitely an experience. <laughs> Yet, it does give you confidence, a good balance of craziness yet capability. Oh, that engine. I love the engine in this. We've got good tires on this as well. These Michelins are lovely. This is an absolute beast. You really do feel connected to the road in this. 
gear shifts are good as well. Might have a torque converter automatic gearbox compared to the dual clutch in the Porsche, but it's it's quick shifting and when you're just pootling around it's smoother than the Porsche is ever so slightly. Sometimes when you're just cruising around and slowing down the Porsche will clunk down into first gear. This doesn't. I love this one too. This is a hard choice. It's a very, very hard choice. So then what's my final verdict? Which of these two cars is best? Well, this new M3 competition is extremely good. It does so many things so very well and it is my daily driver, so I do love it. But do you know what? Porsche wins. Yeah, it's even more sporting and it just feels that little bit more special than the BMW. In fact, it is the car, sorry, I'd like to take home and I'd like to keep. Now I'm about to have a baby next week. Well, not me personally, my, my girlfriend is. And I think you can fit a baby seat in the back of this. So I should be fine with it. Sorry, BMW. The baby buggy. Oh, yeah. Will you forgive me? Will you have me back? I'll be taking you home. Yes. And I'm not too sad about it because this is a great car. Oh. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, show us some love by giving it a like. Also, let me know which you prefer, the Porsche or the BMW, in the comments below. If you want to watch some more videos, just click on the windows. And if you'd like us to help you sell your car and get a great price for it, click on that box there. Go to CarWow. The service is completely free.